What's up, Alphas? Today, we're gonna be joined with Mel from Drop Dead Candles. And for anybody who knows her brand, you probably already know what she sells. But for those of you who might be new here, I wanna throw out the quick disclaimer that Mel does create adult body candles. So she creates things that have body parts and a little bit of male and female anatomy. Obviously, this is gonna be a little bit more sensitive to our viewers who might have children in the room. So if you've got some kiddos running around, this might be an episode that you wanna save for later and watch when you're alone. But because everything is for the purpose of education and artistic representation, we think that this one is gonna be really, really fun to share and we hope that you'll enjoy it and not be a butthead in the comments section. But let's go ahead and get on to the interview. What is up, Alphas? Welcome to our next Alpha interview. I'm sure that you guys got the disclaimer at the beginning, but this is your final warning to get your little ones out of the room just in case you don't want them to see any of our artistic, um, what, what, what are we going to call them? The artistic renderings. We have to dodge like how we <laughs> word things today. So being very careful, but everybody's an adult. We're all, we're all grownups. We're all going to be mature and we're going to have a lot of fun because Mel from Drop Dead Candles creates some really cool products. So do you want to share what you create with the alphas? So um, I make uh, sculptural candles and um, many of them are my most popular ones seem to be uh, shaped like bodies and pieces of anatomy. I think that's safe to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. Um, really anything that's kind of like unique. Um, I do like a lot of thrift store shopping. I make custom molds. I find kind of like cool statues and things to make uh, molds of and then some molds um, I'll buy online as well. So it's a bit of a mixture. Yeah, your shop is fun because it's like it's almost it's got retro vibes, but then it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It, and then it's also, it's got like the goth aesthetic, but yeah, then it's, it's also... It's retro goth for sure. Yeah, uh, then it's got no, like the funky. I actually have the hardest time, you're, you're going to laugh, like branding my shop because I started Drop Dead Candles and I started with Skull Candles and it was very kind of like witchy and goth. And that's how I initially branded uh, Drop Dead. And then um, I started making these body candles in 2018 and... Um, not to like to my own horn, but I was actually like the first person on Etsy to do these body candles. And um, for some reason, the body molds um, ended up getting really, really popular on kind of um, like Amazon and just like some of those like Chinese sites. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people during the pandemic started making candles and they started making body candles, um, which was like a little enraging at first, but then I realized <laughs> if I could actually get past that and um, realize like I had such an advantage. I've been making these for years. I have it down to a science. And that's what I started really focusing on is just being kind of like, okay, the first person to do it, the person with the best ones, the most smooth ones, the most like realistic skin colors. And I just made a killing in 2000. And so that just goes to show you, like you always say, Competition and saturation is actually not a bad thing. No, I would have not at all. never, like I'm talking like six figures in body shape candles in 2000, wow. which is That's nothing awesome. compared to 2018 and, and 2019. Yeah. And you went one step further because you had the body candles and then other people started making the body candles. So you're like, okay, let's do different body types. Yep. Let's let's do different body parts. Let's see how we can take this thing that I'm already good at and do what nobody else is doing with it. So mm -hmm. now not only are you completely dominating that niche, but oh. you've also been able to run with it and incorporate different skin colors, different body types, uh, different body parts. Do you, did you have, um, did you do male bodies as well? Did I see you do? I did. And you know what? Honestly, they didn't do so well. Um, so I kind of was like, you know what? That was that was fun. But I just kind of let them go. They're also a little harder to make the mold. So I kind of got sick of them. But really, um, yeah, I did diversify. That's kind of what I do a lot is I'll, I'll buy some a few molds or I'll make a few molds. I'll see how they do. And then if they do really well, then I'll, you know, buy or make a whole bunch more. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of kind of like testing of things here and there. That's really smart, too, because you don't want to end up with like 600 candles that end up not being like your number one product. Oh, and then, sure. then you're like, what well, do I do with all these? 
Well, friends, let me tell you, um, and I like to share my failures because people often think that I am like such a success and I, I'm always doing all this great stuff, but like it comes with a lot of failures and I have definitely learned my lesson because in the spring, I think of 2021, I was just making money hand over fist and I was like, oh my gosh, I can, this is so great. So I bought like thousands of dollars of molds and did a spring launch and it was like, meh. And I was so disappointed because I invested so much money in molds. I made so much stock. I packed everything like thousands and thousands of dollars. And it was kind of an eye opener that, hey, maybe you need to like test stuff a little bit before you kind of like go wild. And yeah, for some reason it, it didn't do that well. And I, I learned my lesson. So now I just kind of experiment, see how things go. If I analyze my data and then I, I go ham, ham, if it's, <laughs> going well because that's the limiting factor is like not having a lot of molds yeah and sometimes that's the crazy thing about your audience is that you'll be like oh they're gonna get bored if I keep doing the same thing I need to be new and innovative and then you try to be new and innovative and they're like no just keep doing the thing that you've right. been doing they make up I your mind no I know <laughs> and then there's you know and then you have this pressure like you should be putting out new stuff and keeping interest and, and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, sometimes, I don't know, my audience is, is interesting. So as soon as I think I have them nailed down, they move on me. So it changes. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So um, when, I can't remember when exactly did you join HAA? It was like two, beginning two, of 2020. Beginning of 2020. Okay. So was That's, it the, the December 2020 launch then? Or June. Mm, or, or June. No, I bought it in December. Yeah. And okay. then I kind of started working on it. At, once my Christmas rush was done, I started working on it in January. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what most people yeah. do. What made you ultimately decide to join? Because from what I can tell, you were already doing relatively well from the get-go. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I, you know, I actually, relatively to how I did in 2020, like, so, I, and I love talking numbers, so um, I actually only did... I think like $19,000 in 2019. Oh, so that's still really good. <laughs> but compared to like making six right. figures, which was my my goal, I was just, it was great for me at the time. Don't get me wrong. Like I right. seem to be on me now, but it's just in comparison. But um, in, I started to take my, my uh, started as a hobby and then I started to take it seriously. I uh, rebranded, I hired a, branding agency to make me a logo, branding colors, a website, um, just uh, like a line list for wholesale. And it was a big investment for me. It was $4,000 Canadian and I was like sweating. I thought it was gonna be like the worst <laughs> investment that I made, I was so terrified. And they did such a good job. And it, that's when stuff started really picking up for me. And I had watched so I have another friend and she swears by you guys. Actually, sorry, they, they swear by you. And um, I started watching your videos in 2019. And I had no idea what SEO was. And then I <laughs> started changing my SEO and realizing that Etsy is not just, like there's a method to it. It's it's quite scientific, like scientific almost. And what to answer your question more directly, I um, really was attracted to you folks because you take, were sexy. Well, because you're sexy, but also <laughs> because um, you are um, like pretty like science and data driven. And um, I, um, although I have this business and I really like it, I actually am a nurse. And before I be became a nurse, I did a Bachelor of Science in Biology. So I did okay, a lot that's of. Awesome. Yeah, so I did like a lot of stats and I'm just like a fine print numbers kind of person. So I'm watching you guys and I'm like, this is hard data with proof. Um, this is experimenting by doing, you know, two listings and seeing how things go. This is E-rank with data. Whereas I, I did watch a lot of videos um, from other folks and I was like, this is more just like you have a feeling. It's not really proven. And doesn't actually like make a lot of sense. So I felt very confident. And then um, because I I really felt so confident in that, um, I was like, yeah, take my money. I'm going to do this course. It's going to be great. 
And it was, I loved it. That's and awesome. And then my shop exploded. And I don't think it was a coincidence that I started HAA and then my shop really took off. That's awesome. You know, what's crazy is the interview that we did right before yours. Same thing. With, with they, Ani they, from data. They, they, they love the fact that we were data driven and her, her big thing was the psychology yeah. behind everything. The fact that she actually used psychology and neuromarketing. neuromarketing and everything to really, to really push it forward instead of just yeah. like, Hey, we did this and it worked. Do this. Yeah. And I emailed Starla, interestingly enough, um, before I ever took HAA and she said, there's a, and she said, there's a wave of customers coming with the pandemic on Etsy. Etsy is about to go yep. off. And I emailed her and I was like, yes, you're absolutely correct. I also predict this. I see it. And then she featured my like little email in a video. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so <laughs> special. Cause that, cause that was the big thing, right? Like everybody was like, oh, everybody's going to be poor and nobody's going to buy oh. anything. And it's like, no, everybody's going to be at home and, and not bored. wanting to get and bored. <laughs> and they're going to be online spending their money on crap they shouldn't buy. <laughs> so it's going to be a huge year. And did we ever take advantage of that? And was I ever prepared because I had taken AJA and I had listened to, um, to listen to your podcast and I'd also um, got some professional help for branding. So I was like, Oh, it turns out investing in your business in a smart way actually helps you grow. Like, who would have thought? And your branding is great. Like, that's one thing that I wanted to point out. And not just, you know, in HAA, we talk about visible branding and invisible branding. And your visible branding, for one, is absolutely perfect. And that just goes to show that it's not something that anybody should should skimp on or, you know, try to just toss together. Like, your branding's beautiful. But your social media branding, the way that you just type out like your captions and how you sound like, you know, you sound like somebody's best friend. When I read every little element is so fun and so casual and it it really feels more like a friendship between you and your customers. And, and like, really, I know it sounds like corny, but you know, my customers are, um, my friends and they're folks like me. Uh, my brand just happens to be, very tied to like my personal identity and the things that I like, which is, you know, being a little goofy and quirky, being a little kind of goth or whatever. And um, yeah, I, so it's very natural for me to speak to my customers like that. And I have such lovely customers because um, they're, they're laid back. Like I am, like I could never, sometimes I imagine like how I would handle having a luxury like brand or like a jewelry brand that was high end and like having to, to kind of interact with people who are more like serious and, and kind of stuff. And I just, I don't think I would do well. I really, I think it would be very challenging. Yeah. And that's the cool thing that not a lot of people realize is that you get to choose Ah. who you work with based on how you brand yourself. So the, the business that did my branding, I ended up becoming like really good friends um, with the owner and she actually only chooses to work with, she's very selective about her brands. She likes small brands. She likes homemade businesses. She likes uh, women um, because that's the kind of person she is and the person that she likes to interact with. So she will often turn down more fancy luxury brands because she's like, I don't want to deal with that clientele. They have expectations that are like not, I don't want to say unrealistic, but just not on her level. So I was like, wow, that really connected. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's it's a good thing when you attract the type of customer that you want to work with, especially in an industry like yours, where I'm sure that you do get the occasional fuddy duddy who's like, "Oh my god, like I my eyes are burning. How dare you post this smut?" And, <laughs> and you know what? I actually don't get a lot of those people, which is so funny. I really, really? don't. I think they just well, you know, a lot of people that like. Um, do like naughty cross stitch and swear words and stuff. Yeah. Get a lot of 
people, but no, not really. I think they just get the vibe that I'm not going to tolerate it, so they don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the the listings and the photos and things also don't like. Obviously, there's there's bodies and there's body parts and things like that, but they don't they don't give off like a purposefully sexual vibe. It could yeah. be it could be body um, positivity or good yeah. imagery that that kind of thing. Whereas something like the cross stitching, it's usually some kind of message that's meant to be like inappropriate or something like uh, that. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what, I mean, obviously there's a lot of challenges to running a brand like this and being able to market your products and show them to the world is, what do you think like the biggest challenge for you is creating products that often do get flagged by by Um, algorithms and things? Um, uh, I would say... I loved um, Who Moved My Cheese, which is a book that you recommended. And I listen to it like three times a year on YouTube. Um, just being adaptable and not letting things that challenge you just like derail you. Um, I did this really awesome um, like BDSM themed um, photo shoot for a bunch of that. like naughty Christmas kids. I know, and Starly, you love them. You're always like, this is so cool. And let me tell you, Every almost every single one of those pictures got taken down on Instagram. But then you would post oh. another photo that would announce that the last photo got taken mm-hmm. down. So you mm-hmm. always had a counter action when that happened. Yeah. So instead of like being like, oh no, this photo shoot I worked so hard on, everything's being flagged. I was like, I gotta figure out something creative. I gotta kind of have a laugh about it with people. Um, and it's very interesting because um, what I was getting taken down with, I had this like, oh my gosh, I'm, you're gonna have to censor this, but it was like a ball gag. And the that was night one, right? Yeah, I kept getting taken down for like, I guess, because it was a sex toy, I guess. Um, so it was very interesting what was flagged and what was not. And I am very terrified that one day my Instagram is gonna get taken down and I'm gonna lose my like 12K followers because <laughs> sometimes things get flagged. But um, yeah, don't let things derail you. And like, it's very, I try to like live my, who moved my cheese life in business and life and everything. And just like be adaptable, change, like don't get so freaked out that you're like stuck in one spot. Um, I've also learned a lot over the years to like, not use your energy for like petty things. I used to get really really upset when people copied me like it would ruin me for like 48 hours I would like cry I would write angry emails I would go on rants on Instagram and my husband was like you are the only person who's like doing this to yourself like yes your feelings are valid but like you are taking away from your time running your business or enjoying time with me because you're so upset you know and like, literally, like, I'm not ashamed to say this. Like, I literally talk to my therapist about this. Like, it's something that small business owners go through and you feel so cheated and isolated and like you have mm-hmm. no one to talk to. And then when you say something about it, people are like, oh, this lady is just unstable and like going on a rant. Line off the handle. Yeah. Oh, and it's so hard not to because you just, when you have a brand that you put everything of yourself into, it just is so personal and so hurtful. It's a part of you. Yeah. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> but they'll never have, like, when you copy, you're not, you can't put your heart and soul into uh-huh. something that you copy. And when it comes to your brand, you get, I mean, on all of your accounts, on social media, in your shop, on your website, you get there and you feel exactly the type of vibe that you're mm-hmm. trying to give off. And even if somebody were to take every single one of your products and try to like replicate it. They wouldn't be able to replicate the feeling that comes along with it. Exactly, because it's you. It's like they would have to also rip off your personality. And I'm, I'm finding to like, with more experience, the more you get copied, the more you kind of get used to it, but also the more you realize folks who copy you, it's not a sustainable thing. And folks who, you know, go on Etsy, find what's popular and kind of rip it off, it's exhausting for them. They're doing that all the time and they're researching it and they're taking a lot of time and it's never genuine. So while they might kind of get on the coattails of a little 
bit. They don't really have a brand and an identity, so they never really stick. And several of the folks that I was very upset with who I were kind of copying me and ripping me up, they've fallen off the face of the earth. They couldn't cut it. And I wish I knew when I was derailed mentally for 48 hours that I was screaming and crying over someone that wasn't going to last anyway. Yeah. And in a lot of the research that you talked about, it's only surface level. They they can only research what they see that you've mm-hmm. done right on the surface, but they don't understand what is, you know, under the iceberg and that huge task of actually running the business and marketing it and getting, you know, especially in an in industry where you have to avoid things like content filters. That's mm-hmm. research all on its own of knowing how you're going to market yourself and present yourself in a in an online world where you know, there are literally automated systems that see something and flag it and no mm. human eyes ever see it. So, yeah, that that's completely understandable that they would give up. <laughs> they do. And I would also like to mention that, like, there was a, another business that um, uh, copied a lot of my things and they did really well. They just exploded overnight. And... So I would love like for other alphas to know that like being an overnight success is actually not ideal because the person who did this, they exploded. They were doing thousands of sales. They had to shut it down. They were so late on shipping. They were getting so many bad reviews because they didn't understand how to run a business and like the packing and shipping and production components that go with doing that many sales. So as much as everyone likes to be an overnight success, it's actually really detrimental because being having grown slowly over several years before I started doing really well was actually, now that I look back at it, great because I got it down to a science. I had experience. I understood if I was getting the sales volume that I was getting in 2000 and 2018, I would have just fallen off the face of the earth and given, there was no way I would be able to maintain it. So sometimes overnight success is actually really, really bad. Yeah, because evolution takes time. You have to have, and that's one of the things that we talk about in HAA is you do have to have the time to Mm -hmm. adapt to change. Otherwise, it's like getting tossed into a freezing swimming pool. You know, you don't really, if you don't have the time to adjust both physically and mentally, you end Mm -hmm. up living in a constant state of anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, that's not good for anybody. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, there's all of this, like, glamorous overnight success like TikToks like my candle business went from zero to like a thousand orders a day and I'm like okay well best of luck hiring people and upping your production and your shipping and getting it all figured out and like kudos to those folks who can do it some people do but I would say that's the exception yeah absolutely so obviously being a like on the border of not safe for work brand with a lot of the things that you sell. I'm sure you've you've had to go through a lot with your stuff. You talked about your Instagram having troubles there. I'm sure the Etsy algorithm's kind of been a pain in the butt. So if you could if you could go back to when you started the business, what are some things that you would maybe tell yourself to either avoid or to do better or just do totally differently that, that way you wouldn't have to go through all these things again or would go through them better than you did the first time? Mm-hmm. I definitely resisted change and scaling up for a long time. And I even am now like I'm a, uh, a very cautious person. Um, believe it or not, even though I have this very successful business, I still work part time as a nurse. And I actually opened a second business, a brewery, um, craft beer brewery. in we Oshawa, were just Ontario. talking about it. I've, yeah. I've been, I followed that page, too. <laughs> <laughs> I stalk you. Um, yeah, I know. It's nice. It's, it's really, it's, I appreciate that. It's really cool when you're like Etsy coach and, you know, folks that <laughs> have mentored you are actually like personally invested in your success. So that definitely yeah, makes yeah, me. Yeah, of course. Um, I did, de- I definitely resisted change and scaling up. Um, like my husband was like, dude, like you can't be making handles with six molds. Like you need to have 20 or 30 molds and I was like no no it's fine (laughs) and then I finally just invested a couple thousand dollars on more molds and it was like it was night and day um and I'm sure they paid themselves off very quickly (laughs) goodness they did I was I hate spending money when it feels like it's a risk it makes me really nervous 
Um, or like I didn't have wax melters. I would literally be like on my stove with this big pot <laughs> melting wax. Mm -hmm. And then I would like spend $200 and buy this like big industrial strength crock pot type thing that will melt well, your wax in 10 minutes instead of 40, you know, stuff like that. Um, kind of a hard, it's a hard question to think of on the spot. I feel like I'm going to be done this interview and like think of something, but um Stuff I no, would do differently. No, it's um, fine. No, pro no pressure. Yeah, you know what? We've even we've even had alphas who have been like, I wouldn't do anything differently. <laughs> I, would, so just, I would. Yeah. Um, I know I'm kind of like that in the way that I'm like all of my mistakes and all of my things were like definitely something that I needed to like to get me where I was, where I am now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, almost like I, my question contradicts what I teach in HAA because like the whole first part of HAA is like failures are positive. Failures are, are um, how you learn to grow. Neural pathways can't be can't be changed without yeah. failure and self-examination. And then I'm like, <laughs> what would you change? I, I always I always say that I would make all the same choices, but I would do them all just a little faster. I would have started like mm -hmm. three years yeah. earlier. <laughs> So what do you feel like out of all of these accomplishments, because obviously we, we talked about things that you, you know, would wish you would have done better. And it doesn't seem like you've got a lot of business regrets. You've been making all smart moves. You've been making all progressive moves towards, you know, a, a better business with scalability. So out of all of those things, what do you feel like your proudest business accomplishment has been so far? Um. I know this is like, I'm such a hashtag Capricorn. Um, I felt like I had really made it big when I did six figures. Um, that was like something that I had in my mind. Like if you make it to six figures, even if it's like a cent more, you've really made it big. Um, I, uh, according to E-Rank, I'm in like the top like 0 0.01 sales category. That makes me feel really cool. Um, <laughs> Business accomplishments. Okay, it's weird because like, you also like don't feel that accomplished. Uh, and once you reach a goal, you feel like that's like, I'm like, okay, next, like whatever. What I don't like, now? I need to like take some time to like celebrate it and like appreciate <laughs> and working really hard and doing a good mm -hmm. job. But it just that's, seems like it's on to the next thing. Yeah, that's business minded people. And that's why, you know, it's it's great to set goals. Like I've got one where I'm like, I need to hit 50,000 YouTube subscribers. Yeah. I'll be so happy. But I know once I get there, like my life's not going to change. I I'm know. not going to feel any different. It's not going to make a significant impact. And then it's just going to be on to, okay, well, now I got to have 100,000. It's, it's mm -hmm. going to be like on to the next goal. You're it's like always, never quite satisfied. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's always how can I use what I've accomplished for growth? It's like reaching six figures, for instance. Mm -hmm. Like you reach six figures and you're like, okay, I'm still not like a rich person. So what do I do with this to like continue <laughs> making this? Rich. I'm so glad you said that, Mark. I thought I was going to be rich when I made six figures. And yeah. And like, it just goes to show you, like, I still work a day job. Like, even though I make six figures, you don't actually make six figures. It's not like yeah. Etsy was like, here's $150,000 in your bank. It's like, you have to buy supplies. Like, I have a helper mm -hmm. that I pay. Um, I do a lot of, like, research and development. And that stuff is like, oh, you just spent $10,000 on that. And it didn't turn out good. So, like, that's in the crapper. Like, just, right. Yeah. And you see the businesses who, like, if they do get that, like, overnight success, you can always see and spot those businesses that run out and they take that money and then they, like, go on an extravagant vacation. And they just like, blow yeah. it. They blow all yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah, I've got kind of that bird's eye view, just kind of, you know, being a coach and following a lot mm -hmm. of people. And I, I'll see a successful mm -hmm. launch and then I'll see all of the fun vacation photos or the new thing that they mm -hmm. bought. And then they're quiet. And then they'll get quiet for uh, a while. And it's like you piece it together. And in reality, doing what you did where you take that money and you start investing it, that yeah. helps mm -hmm. to ensure that you're going to continue that momentum. And I did profit first in 2020. And that was like, golden that's proper first from you folks right that was a recommendation or am i crazy 
I think that I think it's in our list. I think so, but that was very helpful in managing my money um, for sure. Um, and I, it's interesting because I'm at this phase now. I'm of two different minds where. I'm like, oh, I should quit my nurse job and then I could do my candle business and my brewery full time and I'd be very like fulfilled creatively um, and very happy. But then maybe I'd be very, very financially freaked out because even like my sales dropped quite a lot from 2020 to 2021. Yeah. I, I'm sure I'm not the only person and it freaked me out a little bit, but I'm more relaxed about it now because it makes sense with the economic climate and you know, what comes up must come down. It will come up again. And then another part of me is like, I bet you I could sell my business. I bet you I could sell drop dead and make a good chunk of change, pay off some debt and then focus really hard on my new business. So yeah, you've got that investment in your pocket. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm really having a, a bit of a, a challenge right now, kind of, Sometimes I wish you could just see the future so you could <laughs> make a decision. <laughs> yep, same. My crystal ball is not very good. So I'm just, I'm a little bit at a fence. Sometimes I do really well and I'm like, oh, I just got to quit. But those benefits and, and, and pension is so good when you're a nurse. And it is a big leap. I am so impressed. Like, you know, um, Amanda from Night Moves? I'm oh, not God, sure. Yes. Okay, so believe it or not, her and I were friends and we were friends before we did HAA. We had no idea we were both doing HAA at the same time. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. We never even talked about it. And then all of a sudden I was like, are you on the Handmade Alpha student campus? And she's like, yeah, dude, I did my thing in the summer. And I was like, dude, me too. We live in the same town. She's since moved. <laughs> but I know, so weird. And um she quit her like job and her and her husband do night moves full time. And I'm just like, so amazed. And I just admire that so much. Even you guys, you're like, Hey, see you later. Our price style more. We're doing this full time. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. You, you have, I, I, it's scary. I think to actually make the jump into doing an Etsy shop or doing your, your entrepreneur job, full time. But I think it's one of those things that it's, could I, if, if I quit my day job, even if I could survive off of Etsy, if I quit my day job, would that shop benefit from the extra time that I would be yeah. getting from quitting? I and feel so restricted because of time too. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where like, obviously I can't say, yeah, quit your, quit your freaking job and do your thing. Because obviously <laughs> maybe, maybe you can manage your Etsy shop perfectly fine without it. But I mean, if you think you can take that jump, I mean, I don't see, you know, when, you know, it's one of those things where you hit the point mm -hmm. where you just, you just know, and it feels right. And sometimes it happens as a result of something that happens at work. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard from most of our alphas who have quit their day jobs. It's like, they hit that point where they have a bad day and they realize they're just like, I don't have to be here. Mm -hmm. I can Even do my own right thing. It's so hard. It's so brutal. It's so brutal. And like, it's weird. Cause like, I wouldn't even say like, I love being a nurse, but you know, it's just, it's so secure. So kudos right. to you guys and anyone else who's had like the kahunas to do that. Cause it's, it's really impressive. Yeah. I, mean, I, like, think, you and I think you'll get there. I, I think you could definitely get there. And being in the career field that you're in, everybody's hurting for nurses. So, I mean, if you were if you were to take the leap, it's almost a guarantee that if something were to happen, you'd be able to get back in. Even with yeah. a crappy work climate, you'd be able that's to get back I, in. That's what I, I do think, too. And then I'm going to be like, I'm using my Mac. I can't <laughs> take my gills. You told me to take the leap. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, new phone, who dis? <laughs> new phone, who dis? So... We've asked everybody um, at the end of their interviews, if there was somebody who came to you and they were interested in joining HAA, but they were nervous because obviously it's not a, it's not a cheap program. We, we aren't one of those like $8 courses. We are a 16 hour, nine module giant program that's getting bigger during our big re-record um, 
And it comes with a lot of time. It comes with a lot of that fear, like you talked about, of investment. Because it is a big investment. Yeah. It's, it's not a cheap program. And we stand we stand behind our price and we stand behind the material for it. Right. And what would you tell me? You're going to laugh because I actually think your program is cheap for what it is. We've ha- I've had people tell me that <laughs> yeah. multiple times that I need to charge more. And I'm like, I just, I would be terrified. I, I actually think that for what you get, you guys are really, really not charging enough. I hate to say that, but <laughs> what? that's cool. Um, so for, for me, it actually wasn't that big of an investment because um, I had just spent the, it's because I had spent $4,000 um, the year before and I had such great results that I was like, oh, what's another, you know, $1,500 Canadian for this course that looks really great. Um, hmm. What would I, well, I would say just do it, definitely. Um, sorry. Give me the We've, question again. What would you say to someone who's on the fence? Is that the question? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I, the just do it part, like, that's that's always my thing, is, like, we've got the 30-day refund guarantee yeah. for a reason, like, that yeah. is really, really attractive. And I think that's another reason why like a lot of people will join. And I'm sure that you don't have a ton of people who no. retract. And um, when we do, no, it's we're, in, we're below the, the industry standard yeah, right now. And when we do, it's always like really reasonable. I mean, we don't, we tell them that they don't need to tell us why we don't want to know, especially if it's something private, uh-huh. like, you know, we never know if it's like a husband got mad, you know, that a wife spent the money. Like, that's not our business. Yeah, we don't want somebody getting and, uh, from an abusive that. relationship. You exactly. Know. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things where sometimes they do tell us and most of the time it's, you know, oh, I had an emergency pop up and who wants to be the person who's taking money out of someone's account? when they've got, you know, an emergency or something. And we try not to be hypocritical as well. We, you know, some people are like, it's just not for me. It doesn't happen very often that that's the case. They're like, it's not for me. And I'm like, okay, cool. Then your money's not for me. That's, that's, that's that's how this works. Not our target audience. Just like you talked about, not, not your target audience. And I'm going to say like the same thing too, that you guys say, which is like, HAA is not like a miracle pill or like, you know, you don't take it and then your business is amazing. Like it involves a lot of work and like it's not bad work but you really have to commit to it and i see a lot of folks um being like i'm doing everything and it's like still not working and i'm like you're actually not though like you're not Mm -hmm. i actually refrain from commenting on a lot of stuff because i'm very like tough love (laughs) and sometimes i'm like oh but i'm like you can't, it's not good enough. Like you can't just be like, I'm not really good at photography. So like, this is my best. And it's like, it's good enough. It's like, no, it's not good enough. Okay. And if you can't do it, I understand. I can't do a lot of stuff. So you have to unfortunately hire someone or get a friend and trade them for products or or whatever to do. Like, it's just, you really have to do it and you can't rush through it. And you have to really think and take it seriously. But it gets yeah. you really, I was like reinvigorated about my business when I started HAA. I was like really sparked a fire under my butt. Um, I also like, I do like that you folks are very personable, very down to earth. You're very committed about being on the bean, answering, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. answering emails that like promptly. I don't. I see so many, once I took AJA, my targeted ads were just like Etsy course, Etsy course, Etsy course. (laughs) And I'm such an anti, like, I hate to say it, like, like mommy business person. Like anytime I see like mommy business, boss Boss babe, babe. like like, I just hate it. It makes me so mad. Um, And I think you folks, you can back up your stuff. And, and honestly, like, you have so much free content that you don't charge a cent for and you could practically improve your Etsy shop just by doing that. But the HAA course has the advantage of like extra stuff. Plus it's organized in a kind of nicer, nicer way. So I feel like even if you're like not sure, watch a bunch of SEO videos that you folks do, change your SEO, give it two to three months to work out. And if you see improvements, be like, Hey, I learned this from HAA. I trust them. Now I'm going to take the course. Absolutely. That's awesome. And, and, and we and we do say that. You know, we we know the material works. 
but it does it, it's entirely on the the user to interpret that information and be yeah. able to put it into into work and there is a little bit of that like that that luck from the from the algorithm gods to kind of be on your side from time to time. It's not it's not all just one hundred percent. But you also, but it's ninety nine percent work. You, you know? also have to be willing to treat it like uh, we. I always talk about you know the seven steps of the scientific method, where you've got to make a hypothesis. You need to test mm -hmm. your theory. You need to study mm -hmm. what happened. You need to reevaluate afterwards. And if it didn't work, you need to pivot and start that process over again. Because and, HIA, HIA isn't one of those courses where it's, this is how I did it, do it this way and you'll be successful. Oh, because right. that's that's most courses, right? Exactly. Really like that you folks are like, this is not a secret. Like what we teach, like there is no, I hate when, people, when I get those ads that are like, the number one secret to SEO and it's like success secrets number one like secret to be successful on Etsy because it's like there is actually not one and it's not a secret and also like if you read this like I read the seller's handbook like back to front mm -hmm. page every single thing because Etsy is giving you the information you need to know right yeah, so I give you everything like just read it it's mm -hmm. It's and I'm just shocked at how many people are just like, what is that? Or like whatever. And I also really like um, that you harp like that you encourage like consistency. Being successful on Etsy and being a successful business is just like anything, like mm -hmm. working out, losing weight, getting new habits. You have to show up every day. It's and the grind. Work at it a little bit every day. And it doesn't do it. Eh, just, yeah, just do it. Um, exactly. It. Yeah. It it's, happen, like tomorrow, you're not going to have it's like every day over months consistent, like log into Etsy every day. Um, work on your photography every day. Do a post on social media. If like just that is where you get results. You can't just go at it hard and then forget about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and when you when you don't see those instant results also not getting discouraged and, and saying like what you said, oh, yeah. I've tried every, I've tried posting on social media and it doesn't work. Well, you either need to continue doing it until it does work or you need to pivot what you're doing and experiment a different style because that style might not be working, but there is plenty of evidence to support that social media absolutely does work. There are plenty yes. of brands out there, including yours, that prove that social media is an amazing way to market your business. You just have to be able to do it right and make sure that it looks a way that is going to appeal to the type of person that you're targeting. It took me five years to get over 10K on Instagram. It, I did not get, I still, my growth halts and stuff. And they're just posting consistently, posting interesting content, quality, even when no one was there to like it or care, just constantly. And, and that's great what, photos. Thank you. You have great <laughs> photos. Yeah, you so I'm improving. I used to hire uh, my branding agency to do the photos, but I started doing it, which is really helpful. Well, yeah. I wouldn't have known that that there was a difference. I I had no idea that there was ever a pivot. It, it all scroll looks cohesive and consistent. Baby, just scroll back. <laughs> <It's really bad. laughs> I, I was going to say I've never scrolled that far down. I've gotten. I, I, back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well. Um, do you have any final words for the alphas before we sign off? Um, I would say, um, hmm, so many Throwing things. So many. I know, and it, it, I, I keep throwing you like under the bus, like here, oh, inspire no. them. Um, no, I think actually like we just hit on several things. Um, I would say like if, I would, I would say my like favorite advice is like the don't, who move my cheese advice, like to in life and in business, you need to change. You need to take calculated risks. If you sit there and plant your feet and go like, it's not working. Etsy hates me. I'm never going to do this. Then you're never going to. And you can't expect results if you just do the same thing over and over again. You have to try different things and failure is hard but it's it's always a good lesson so like don't be afraid to try new things fail make mistakes get messy it's like miss frizzle <laughs> <laughs> magic school bus <laughs> yeah magic school bus it so yeah i think and i think like i don't want to say anyone can do it because anyone can't do it but i would say like 
hard work go and consistently goes like a lot further than than most things than being an overly getting lucky whatever it's just just consistency hard work and yeah that's that's what it's all about Perfect. All right, guys, Mel's links are all going to be down below. Obviously, we weren't able to show a lot of her products because of YouTube's algorithm, but make sure that you check out. I'll have all of her links down there, and I'll go ahead and toss down the link to Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Garrett because it's my favorite book. It only takes about an hour to read. There are YouTube recordings of it. I'll toss those down below as well so you can check them out. But Mel, thanks so much for hanging out, and uh, Alphas, we'll see you next week for our next Alpha interview.